Hey, Rick Bell, once again with uh, Workforce. We're doing another live stream for you today. I'm here with Matt Morris, who is the VP of FMLA Source at Comsight. So, Matt, welcome to the to the live streaming, and we're happy to have you. Here. Thanks, Rick. So, we're talking World Cup soccer, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to talk World Cup soccer. We'll talk after. Um, so, okay. So, a couple questions about FMLA, really. Sure. Um, so, what's the number one complaint that you hear from employers regarding FMLA? Um, it is unplanned intermittent leave, and it has been that way for the last 10 years at least. Um, it is employees taking small amounts of time off, even to the minute. Um, often uh, it's perceived because they're late for work or they want time off. Um, and that that has become an issue for two reasons. One, because it's seen as potential abuse of the policy that, um, that their attendance policies, uh, issues that create morale around the workforce. And the other, more importantly, regardless of the abuse, it's just hard to staff when you have employees who are not there um, when you want them to, to be. And where it really affects employers are uh, industries like hospitals, retail, manufacturing, where you need people at a job at a specific time. Of course, that then breeds additional unplanned intermittent leave because uh, those are the reasons that the employee knows that they can take off and from their perception not be penalized for it or even terminated for it because they have that protection and there's no other way to do it. So we see lots of employers talk about employees who will request a vacation, it gets denied and suddenly that's then used for intermittent leave. Mm -hmm. Now to be clear, most employers that are using intermittent leave are using it for good reason. That's why the law exists. But that's the, the issue that employers really have the most. Yeah. Um, and, and really kind of on top of that, it's, um, while employers may not be able to eliminate FMLA abuse by their employees, uh, how can they minimize it? How can they kind of help uh, minimize that, that issue? Yeah. So there are, there are a number of ways you can do it. So it, employers who are really trying to tackle this unplanned intermittent problem there's a few things. One is, it, especially if they perceive there's abuse, um, the best mechanism that the, that the FMLA itself provides to employers is recertification. Mm -hmm. I talk to a lot of uh, other experts, practitioners, who will say that they really don't like recertifications. We think they work to some degree, and what that really is is you're asking that employee's same doctor to say, mm -hmm. yes, this employee still has this condition. What you can do though is if there are certain factors that are leading you to perceive misuse, you can, uh, you can let that doctor know what those issues are and have them comment on those. Mm -hmm. And what I will say to employers often is, sometimes you lose the battle that the, that doctor still says, yes, Jim still has the condition, but um, even when they do so, that employee knows there's a little bit of a spotlight on them now and they don't do anything. Right, right, right. So, okay, so um, holding employees accountable. I mean, yeah. is that is that really an issue for employers? It is. They and, should... and, how do, and how do they hold them accountable? What should yeah. they be doing? Well, um, you know, intermittent leave for FMLA cannot be used as, as something to point people on attendance. Mm -hmm. um, they should definitely be holding employees accountable, but they should also be making sure that they understand what's going on in their, their workforce. And they, they, you know, HR does have a pretty good idea of who the people are that are misusing and who are the people who are legitimately using it. But um, the challenge is figuring that out. There's two things I would say. One is a lot of people talk about the challenge of the Americans with Disabilities Act and the fact that that's created another, effectively another entitlement in different ways of leave. But what the ADA also uh, affords employers, in fact requires of employers, is the, is the need to have a conversation with employees about what's going on with them and ways that they can accommodate. Because ADA and FMLA are almost always going to be um, present, especially for the employee's own condition, I think that's a place where employers can step in and say, are there things that we can do to help? Mm -hmm. um, maybe there are, and if there aren't, that may be other signs that there are um, issues at play. The other thing they can do is there is this burgeoning set of court cases around the country on FMLA 
uh, that we call honest belief, which is this idea that employers can actually take action against employees um, even if they have an otherwise approved FMLA leave, if they have an honest belief that they're abusing. And there are dozens of cases on this. Now, mm -hmm. it doesn't apply in every federal circuit, uh, and it's sort of case by case because it's all manufactured to some degree by case law. But I would encourage employers to think about the ADA and think about these honest belief cases and look into those. And, and it's more than just asking an employee to bring a note from a doctor. Right. I mean, you, you can do that from an attendance point of view. From an, from an FMLA point of view, that really can create uh, issues in terms of what you're requiring of, of that employee. But um, it's really about looking in to see what is going on here, talking to coworkers, doing an investigation, at least that honest belief thing. And then the, and the ADA, it's really about having that conversation to, feel, uh, to see are there certain things that we can be doing to help them so that they're not using these small amounts of time that are really creating staffing issues for them. Communication, I guess, is really yeah, key. exactly. Right. So, right. Okay, so one other thing on FMLA. Mm -hmm. um, talk about best practices regarding paid time off before or after FMLA. I mean, what are the issues there? Right. So they don't, sometimes they don't overlap, right? You can have just a, a day off that you're sick that doesn't end up being FMLA. But to the extent they overlap, we, we encourage all of our um, clients to run them concurrently. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is that the, the FMLA, besides one case out in California a couple years ago, the FMLA really basically says it's the employer's responsibility to designate something as FMLA. In other words, if I'm an employee and I'm taking uh, time off under a PTO plan, and it really kind of qualifies as FMLA, to some degree it doesn't really matter what I as the employee want, it's that employer's responsibility to designate. Looking at it the other way, that employer then has the responsibility to designate it, and if they don't, it's still effectively gonna be FMLA protected, so you might as well designate it and reduce that employee's uh, FMLA balance and, and decide what you wanna do from there. All right, so where within an organization does FMLA compliance reside? Is it legal or is it HR? Is, uh, who really should be taking ownership of that? That's a great question. We have it, we see it all over the place. Sometimes it sits in it, those areas, sometimes it sits in benefits, sometimes it's a collaboration of several units. And what you see now is, especially with ADA compliance for, for leave being such a big deal, you find that the sort of the vestiges of what, how HR departments have been constructed, you might have HR, you might have ADA in one section and FMLA in another. Employers really need to bring those together and create sort of a consolidated unit. If you've outsourced it to a third party or at least centralized it in one place, it becomes a much easier um, way to handle it because that centralized organization can then just send out the right communications to the right parties because it really does touch so many different areas of human resources. Mm -hmm. Is outsourcing real big with FMLA? Yeah, I mean, that's what we do. Uh -huh. um, and we have seen year over year sort of record growth. I think we've we've quadrupled in size in the last six years or so. So it, it really is, especially as compliance becomes so much harder, more leaves, more court cases, employers are just sort of crying uncle and saying, I can't do this sure. anymore. I get it, yeah. Okay, one thing, uh, yeah. last, last thing. So yeah. let's, let's turn to ADA. Um, what are the chief concerns that you're hearing from employers about ADA? Sure, so there are two things. One is, you know, you can take those unplanned intermittent time, that unplanned intermittent time still under the ADA as well. But the real thing that employers are looking to are the fact that for these continuous leaves, um, long-term leaves where employees are out, whereas under the FMLA you are, um, you know, you're sort of confined by the 12 weeks. There is no confinement per se under the ADA. Mm -hmm. It's um, a reasonable amount of time. So employers are saying, well, what does reasonable mean? There's a, there are now court cases coming out. There was one here in um, the Seventh Circuit here in Chicago from last year that made a lot of uh, noise that said multi-month leaves are not a reasonable accommodation under any circumstances for an employer. But even now, there have been two uh, lower court cases that are eating away at that. So employers are really struggling with, how do I figure out what a rule is to, in order to say enough is enough? Mm -hmm. what, I, what we're telling employers is, don't focus on that. That's, that's just not the, 
not where your effort right. should be. You should be really figuring out what's an effective um, and yet um, not burdensome way for your human resources department to really uh, evaluate these ADA leaves in a well-reasoned manner and also on an individualized basis because that's just what the law requires. Right, right. Um, anything else? Uh, or anything else that, that maybe you want to talk about with FMLA? Any last points? Hmm. Um, you know, our session yesterday here at SHRM was really about how to make sure that your managers are complying and making sure how to train them. That is something that, if, as I've seen the court cases coming out, and I usually read most of them that come out uh, every year, it's just been this strange trend where all of a sudden managers are not sort of, are kind of creating mayhem uh -huh. for employers and making sure that they understand what their roles and responsibilities are is a really important point for, for HR right now. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you so much, Matt. Really appreciate the time. Once again, Rick Bell with Workforce, and uh, that about wraps up our live streaming for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.